Okay, I'm going to do a couple other cool things to go with this slideshow that we just created. Um, I want to show you how you could do a creative border for your slideshow and how you could put in some effects and things like that. So I've opened up Photoshop here and I'm going to create a blank document, File New, and I'm going to set the um, height to 500 pixels. All my images in the slideshow are 500 pixels tall. So I'm going to set this to 500 pixels and then the width I'm going to set to about let's say uh, well I'll set that to let's say 480 for right now. Okay and I'm going to make sure the background contents are transparent so that's important. right? So I click OK and now I've got a transparent um, image in uh, in Photoshop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to fill this area right here let's say with black. So I'm going to get the paint bucket here get the paint bucket tool. Black is the color here and boom. So now I've got that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a paint brush say brush tool and I'm going to get a kind of let's say aggressively some type of aggressive brush here like if I got that I could paint that let's see here deselect control D on my keyboard and I could I could paint and it gives me the effect of possibly some uh, paint strokes here right I want to have the effect of some paint strokes, right? And maybe I might need some uh, other types of brushes as well, which I could bring in. Let's see here. Um, I could try to get something else. See if I do that. That's pretty aggressive but I, I want to get rid of this black line but I want it to look like uh, paint strokes or kind of crosshatchy and I might want to erase some too so eraser tool I can get the same type of tool going back out to erase, to erase back in if I've gone all the way to the edge here. And then I could switch back to paintbrush. And then switch back to eraser. So I just kind of want this um, artistic painterly edge here on the top and bottom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as a mask for my slideshow. Alright, so that's it. So right now I'll say File, Save for Web, and I'm going to need to save this in a format that allows me to have transparency. And so what I, I just want to make sure I go back there. What I did was is I said File, Save for Web, which is a good option if you have a low resolution image, which I do and JPEG will not allow me to save transparency so I'm gonna go to uh, PNG 24 and transparency is checkmarked right and now I can click save and I will save it to my folder here and I'm gonna call it mask okay so there it is it's called mask now I'm going to switch to Flash, and in Flash, I'm going to go back to Scene 1 to the main timeline. Alright, so I'm going to go back to the main timeline, and I'm in Flash, and here is this, this um, slideshow. If I select it, you can see it says um, Slideshow right here, Movie Clip, MC Slideshow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to encase this movie clip in another in another movie clip, right? Kind of like a rushing nesting doll, I'm going to stick this movie clip inside of another movie clip. So I'm going to select this movie clip, MC Slideshow, 
and I'm going to say modify convert to symbol and I'm going to put it into another and I'm going to call it MC slideshow holder so this holds this movie clip so I'll click OK and so now if I select it you see it says MC slideshow holder if I double click on it I'm inside of it and inside is MC slideshow and now what I can do is I can make a new layer right and there's my MC slideshow and I'll call this layer mask and this is where I'll put my mask okay I've got this mask layer and I'm gonna import my image right to the stage here so import to stage and I'm gonna go to my desktop find the folder where all my files are in and there it is there's my mask.png okay and it pops right in now my mask.png is the right height alright notice it's the right height it's a little bit wider than I needed it to be just because some of my images are um, more narrow or wider so I just kinda wanted to make it wider in case I had a square image then I could have something bigger but I'm just gonna place it right there right on this registration point and there it is and it's a mask right so it should mask out on the top edge and the bottom edge some of the stuff underneath it so um, and what I might want to do also is well first of all let's see if it just works like that so what I'm gonna do is double click on the symbol next to where it says mask you double click right there turn it into a mask click OK now that's a mask and then on the layer underneath you double click on the symbol and turn that into the masked masked ED layer so now it's a special layer property so now this is this layer the property of the layer it's a mask layer and this is a mask to layer and if you lock both you should see it take effect and you can see here that the, the bottom edge and the top edge are not affected right so there's a problem there right so what do I need to do to fix that well this guy that I um, brought in this ping file what I might want to do is I might want to um, convert it from a bitmap right from a PNG file to a vector image and then that might work better so I'm gonna select it and say modify bitmap trace bitmap and I'll say color threshold we'll say I'll say color threshold 2 right and then minimum area I'll say 5 pixels few corners uh, many corners normal uh, curve fit we'll say uh, normal and click OK and it changes this object right here into a um, into a vector image right so I just did a modify trace bitmap and now this thing you can see when I select it I'll zoom in when I select it you see that now we only see part of it right only part of it is showing right this is the background this is the image you can see that it's just part of it, it there, there's nothing here that's the, the layer underneath and so now if we lock both layers to see our mask take shape you can see that the mask now works so I'll zoom out and now hit control enter publish a movie publish my flash movie and you'll see the mask working so now you can see the aggressive border right on um, both sides here so you can see the aggressive border the uneven edge that kind of gives it kind of a rough look right so anyway that's how you do a mask and once again what I did was that was interesting was I took the slideshow movie clip put it inside of another movie clip so I could do this mask layer right and I can turn it off now the eyeball off if I lock both layers I can see it happening I lock both layers I can see the mask in effect but you can see right now that it's a masked layer above the slideshow right here's the mask and then underneath is the slideshow if I double click on this slideshow notice now 
I'm inside of scene one, inside of MC slideshow holder, inside of the slideshow, and then there is the slideshow. All right, but that gives it a kind of a cool border. Now another thing that I could do is, is I could go back to scene one and I could take this movie clip which is now MC slideshow holder and I could add effects to it. So I select the movie clip and I could say I want to do a uh, I'm sorry not not a color effect but I, what I want to do is a, um, a filter. So here's the filters you go all the way down to the bottom Let me see if you guys can see this make sure you can see it scroll all the way down to the bottom and uh, click on a filter and I could do a drop shadow right so that might be nice. I could take the drop shadow set the quality to medium and the strength a little bit higher let's say to 110 percent and I can blur the edge out let's say to maybe to 10 pixels right and take the strength up a little bit again and so now it's gonna have this drop shadow effect so I'll hit control enter to publish my movie right and now you can see that that masked edge is looking a lot cooler with the drop shadow underneath. Notice how the masked edge goes with the more narrow image too, right? When I have a narrow image, since it's just masked on the top and bottom, I can have images of different widths and it still has a good effect, right? So that's kind of nice. And now it has a kind of hover drop shadow. 